Well, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of him. I haven't seen him for 13 years, and I never really prepared myself for this day because I really never expected it to happen. And I'm extremely proud of him. That's all I could tell you. It's, it's just unbelievable. I really never expected it, and it's like a fairy tale. It's just something that I never really thought would happen, that I'd see him again. Anna Asqui is standing by at the auditorium now with our live eye camera. I don't want to cut in. You're on, you're on. The first of three chartered buses, buses carrying the 46 political prisoners and their 33 family members has now pulled up to the stage entrance of the Dade County Auditorium. The scene here is crazy. People are clapping. Hundreds of family members, maybe even up to a thousand, have abandoned their seats inside the Dade County Auditorium just so that they can get a first-hand look at relatives that they have not seen in as much as 15 to 19 years. Their arrival here tonight is the fulfillment of a promise by President Fidel Castro over a month ago that a new climate had set the scene for the liberation of hundreds of political prisoners. The political prisoners are now being taken off the bus. As you can hear behind me, it is a mob scene. It is quite a mob scene. The first one off the bus is Tony Cuesta. He is blind. He led several infiltrations into Cuba. He is saluting the, the crowd who is yelling for a free Cuba, yelling, Viva Cuba. Tony Cuesta, imprisoned for 13 years. He is waving to the crowd. The prisoners are now exiting from the bus, as you can see, and they are slowly being let into Dade County Auditorium, where there are more people inside to greet them. People are calling the name of Tony Cuesta, probably the most popular of all the prisoners who is, has been released in this group of 46. As I said, the mob out here is crazy. Slowly, slowly they are going inside. Here we have Enrique Fernandez, his wife, Celia Fernandez, whom we interviewed recently, is, is trying to climb over a barricade by police cars. Metro Miami police have barricaded the area to keep the, the crowds from getting to the free prisoners. They are crying, there are tears, people, people are yelling. Now they are going inside for a welcoming ceremony inside Dade County Auditorium. Ana Asquiri reporting live from Dade County Auditorium. The auditorium. Thank you, Anna. We will have full coverage of those auditorium ceremonies tonight at 11 on Update 2 of News Weekend. And that's our special report. We return now to Montage in Progress. It is the first freedom flight carrying political prisoners from Havana to Miami in 16 years. The 727 jet, donated by Eastern Airlines for the airlift, left Havana almost two hours behind schedule. This first group of 46 political prisoners who served sentences for committing crimes against the state and their 33 family members is the beginning of what is expected to be a steady flow of prisoners leaving Cuba in coming months. U.S. authorities who screened this group beforehand have now in their possession five other lists of names. In Miami, about 2,000 friends and relatives waited inside and outside the Dade County Auditorium to greet the new arrivals. The scene was disorganized and emotional. After years of waiting for wives and children, what seemed impossible now was vivid reality. I'm very, very well. I am so happy. <laughs> How about your son? How do you find your husband? Very well. He's very... I think he's in uh, good, uh, good health and it's fine. How do you feel about finally seeing your father? Great. Great. What are you going to do now? Just see how it goes now in new life, you know. Bernardo Benes, a Miami banker who organized the Freedom Flight and met with President Fidel Castro, returned to Miami optimistic. The, the essence is that I'm convinced that, that this is a program that they are serious about and, uh, and that thousands of political prisoners are coming out and thousands of Cuban families are going to be reunited. Did Castro, in fact, tell you that? Yeah, definitely. He said that. For the family of Enrique Fernandez, imprisoned for 15 years, this special night had double significance. I don't know, I'm just super happy. 
How does your father look? Oh, terrific. <laughs> How do you bring? He says, ring. It's impossible to leave that. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Celia, how about you? Oh, yeah. like I said before, this is the best present I can get on my 18th birthday. <laughs> For the Fernandez family, today is a dream come true. Reunions like this one will become commonplace in the very near future for very many other families. Ana Asquí, Channel 4 News, Dade County Auditorium. Behind me is Combinado del Este, one of Cuba's largest political prisons. But for many of the prisoners here, their hope for freedom has been renewed. In this facility on the outskirts of Havana, there are 1,000 political prisoners, one-third of all such prisoners in Cuba. This is considered to be a model jail, and conditions are relatively good. Many of these men have consistently spoken out against the Cuban government, even though some of them have been in jail since 1959. Recently, some have written letters to President Fidel Castro and to the Miami XR community asking its members to support the dialogue between them and the Cuban government, even though they say they oppose the government here. Today, they met with Miami banker Bernardo Benes, an American newsman. This was the first time a prison here has been open to any media, let alone a Cuban exile, even though we were not allowed inside the prison cell. Benes said every effort is being made to free them. The prisoners, except for the Owens, are remarkably well fit. They say that in the past this was not the case. Some strongly deny they have been brainwashed while maintaining that in the last year, the Castro government has treated them better and has indicated it wants to solve the political prisoner problem once and for all. The prisoners also feel they are winning their long ideological battle. The freedom of the political prisoner is uh, a fundamental aspect uh, which cannot be overlooked at this moment. I think that uh, other considerations should be left to second positions. What do you think the Castro government has decided suddenly to go into this dialogue and to be in the willingness to release a number of political re uh, prisoners? Well, uh, first of all, I think that you would have to ask um, uh, Castro what his uh, uh, reasons for getting involved in this are. But I am not personally interested in his uh, objective. I am only interested in our objective, and our objective is the liberty, the total liberty of all political prisoners and the reunification of the family. When you are set free, do you feel you, would, you will have won? Of course, uh, there's no doubt that to obtain our freedom uh, uh, is to have won our battle. The battle of all those who have uh, maintained this position during uh, so many years. And uh, one of our main interests, precisely, is the liberty of those who do not understand our position being in prison. It seems certain that after today's release of political prisoners, more like these men will follow. To emphasize the importance of that, the Miami delegation led by Bernardo Benes met with Castro this afternoon to ask him to consider strongly the release of those in jail for their beliefs and to let them and their families leave Cuba. Castro gave no firm answer, but it seems clear that more prisoners will be released. The only question is when. Gustavo Godoy, Channel 4 News, Havana, Cuba. second exile that means that and now I go back to the stay uh, not in the same shape uh, but I feel happy also because I have uh, work to do well my first thought is uh, to try to do my best effort to obtain the release of my companion are to try to liberate most of the political prison left behind our companions and join them with their family in the U.S. That's our basic uh, work and I really think it's our duty and our obligation 
a human obligation we have with them that are left behind. To me, this is the most exciting phenomenon, probably the last 25 years in, in human rights. And I'm, I, I feel flabbergasted, and I don't know if your cameraman is being able to take me because I am 50 feet tall today. <laughs>